Hi, good day. Welcome back to our class in Chemistry Laboratory. Today, we will start performing an experiment on the organic chemistry. By the way, the first 10 experiments that we performed were all about inorganic chemistry. Today, we will perform an experiment about organic chemistry. So the activity that we're going to perform is entitled Some Differences in Properties Between Organic and Inorganic Substances. For the first part of the activity, we're going to prove the composition of the organic and the inorganic substances or compounds. So we will be heating some of these organic and inorganic substances. First, we are going to heat the table sugar or chemically known as the sucrose. This is the table sugar. Take note of the color of the table sugar before it is heated. Then, let us heat this over the flame. Take note what happens to the heated table sugar. Then we are going to heat this piece of plastic. Can you observe what happens to the piece of plastic when we are going to heat this? Observe what happens to the piece of plastic, especially its color. Then we are going to heat this piece of aluminum foil. Take note of its color and appearance. Observe what happens. Remember that this, this black one was the product after heating the plastic. And this other one is the aluminum foil. Observe. Especially the color. Then we're going to heat a pinch of starch. This is the pinch of starch. I want you to observe the color before it is being heated. So let's hit it here over the flame and observe what happens to the color. Observe what happens. Then we're going to hit this sand. Can you take note of its color? Then let's heat it over the flame. 
and take note what happens to the color after heating. Okay, observe. Do you think there is a change in color after heating it? Then we're going to heat a piece of leaf. This is a leaf and we're going to heat this. Observe what happens. Now, I want you to observe what happens to the substances after it has been heated, especially on the color. The next property that we're going to prove is the combustibility. What do we mean by combustibility? This is the ability to be burned or to get burned. Okay, we're going to hit this piece of wax. So this is the wax. And kindly observe what happens to the wax when it is being heated. Remember, we're going to prove the combustibility of this substance wax. Then we are going to heat a table salt. This is the table salt before it is heated. I want you to observe especially its color. Now we are going to prove whether this table salt is combustible or not. Observe. The next property that we're going to prove is solubility. Now, what do we mean by solubility? Solubility is the ability of the substance to be dissolved in a solvent. Now, we are going to use here the table salt and the coconut oil, and our solvent will be water. Let's get some drops of the coconut oil. So let's get five drops of the coconut oil and we're going to dissolve this with water. One, two, three, four, five. Two. Then let us add this with water. Then let's shake it. and observe what happens. Then let's get a pinch of the table salt and we will add it with water. Mm -hmm. 
This is the table salt. And we are going to add this with water and try to dissolve it. Observe what happens. Try to compare the two. Try to compare the two. This is that of the coconut oil, and this is that of the table salt. This time, let us use another solvent, and the solvent will be the kerosene. We will use the same solute, which are the coconut oil and the table salt. This is the coconut oil. And we're going to add to this the kerosene. Observe what happens to the coconut oil. Then let's get a pinch of the table salt and add it with the kerosene. This is the table salt, and I want you to observe what happens when this will be added with the kerosene. Observe what happens. I want you to compare the two. This is the coconut oil with the kerosene, and this is the table salt with the kerosene. The next part of the activity is to prove the rates of reaction exhibited by the organic substances and the inorganic substances. Let us compare the rates of reaction exhibited by the ferrosulfate and that of the denatured alcohol. So let us use first this ferrosulfate. Then let's add two drops of the sulfuric acid. and one drop of the potassium permanganate. I want you to observe what happens to the, re to the reaction. I will add one more drop of the potassium permanganate and please observe the rate of reaction. Again, okay, have you observed it? Again, then instead of the ferrosulfate, we are going to use the denatured alcohol. This is the denatured alcohol, and I'm going to get five drops of this. To this denatured alcohol, I'm going to add two drops of the sulfuric acid.
And I will add to this one drop of potassium permanganate. I want you to observe. Again, again, one more drop of the potassium permanganate and I would like you to observe the rate of reaction as compared with that of the ferrosulfate. What I would like you to compare is that how the potassium permanganate color disappears or in how many minutes or seconds did it disappear as compared to that of the ferrosulfate. Again, I would like you to observe. Did you see the pink color? And the time it took to disappear it. So those are all for today. I have demonstrated to you the differences between the properties of the inorganic and the organic compounds. I want you to write all your observations and answer all the questions asked in the lab guide. Please submit your output next week. That would be all. And this is your teacher, Professor Desitas Ruiz, of Holy Name University.